Hey guys, Rick at Healing Field Farm. Uh, today I thought we'd talk about uh, tips for starting a small farm or homestead and uh, come up with you know 10 categories and we'll, we'll go through them. Uh, the first one is you need to ask yourself why you want to have a farm or a homestead. Um, and, the, and the answer to that is not to make money. It's not. That's the wrong answer. Um, you need to ask yourself, what is the purpose and where is the joy going to come from while doing this? Okay. And then once you figure that out, write it down. You put it on a piece of paper, a piece of cardboard, you know, make, make a little sign and hang it somewhere where you're going to see it every day. Maybe it's, you know, on the inside door of your barn or on the way outside of your house or may, maybe in your own little office because you're going to have hard days and because farming is just, you know, it, it's a hard life sometimes and you're going to have those hard days and you're going to need to be reminded why you're doing this. You know, maybe it's for the future generations. Maybe, you know, it's because of your love of animals. Maybe you just want to be more sustainable on your own. You know, if, if that's the real reason, write that down. Put it somewhere where you're going to see. It, it's very similar to the idea of maybe you work a 9 to 5 job and you have pictures of your kids in your, in your office. You go in, you have a bad day at work, but you see the picture of those kids and that's what you're working for to make sure that they have a good life and that they're provided for. So you will have bad days. There's just no way around it. And you'll need to be reminded sometimes of the real reason, the core reason of why you're doing what you're doing. Okay. Uh, the second one is you need to talk to other farmers um, in your community, make friends. Uh, you can join groups, um, you know, Facebook pages. Um, you know, you know, there's a lot out there that you can join and get to know people, get to talk to people um, because they'll help you. You know, you, no one expects you to have all the answers and nobody can do everything on their own. Um, you know, there's things that you'll come across and you'll have no idea. What do we do? Well, you, you know, that way you have people to reach out to if, if you need help or you need advice. And, you know, go talk to those farmers that have been doing this 10, 15 years and ask them what their struggles were. And, you know, ask them what that breaking point was when, you know, they finally started seeing the success. And maybe, maybe that'll help save a little, you know, headache um, on your journey. So, uh, number three is don't incur debt that you don't really need. Now, I would love to go buy a tractor. I don't need a tractor. I don't, you know, um, I could use it around here and that would be fine, but I don't need to spend $15,000 on a tractor for something I'm going to use once in a while, you know, same thing with a greenhouse. I would love a giant hoop house, but I don't need a $5,000 hoop house right now. Down the road, I might, but I don't need to put myself into debt now for those things and then spend all my time, you know, trying to keep up with payments. You can rent most of the equipment that you need. Um, you know, if you've made good relations in your community, maybe, uh, you know, somebody will lend, lend you the equipment you need, or you can pay somebody to come up and do what you need if, if you know, that's the case. But, you know, I'm going to go rent a rototiller because I don't need a rototiller 365 days out of a year. I need it for like two, right? So I don't necessarily need a tractor right now, you know, five years down the road, I might, but that's a purchase I'm not going to put myself in debt for ever. If I have the money to buy one and I really need it, then I will buy it. But otherwise, you know, I'm not going to incur extra debt and then spend all, all our time working to, you know, keep up with those debts. That, that's not a smart business model per se. Okay. And then, you know, grow slowly. Um, don't overdo it. Just, you, you have to go at your own pace. Don't dump $3,000 into, you know, uh, an idea that you don't really have because now you're just, you're incurring debt and that, that's the wrong way to go. Do what you can handle financially and slowly grow it and build it as you go. 
Um, that, that's really, uh, you know, the, that has to be a key focal point for you if this is the kind of lifestyle you want to live. So, four, um, do your research. Read, uh, read up books online, watch videos, uh, take seminars. A lot of colleges offer, you know, free seminars, especially in agricultural communities. Um, there, there are just so many tools available out there and so much knowledge. So, you know, if you don't know and you you want to know, then, you know, read and talk to other people. You know, maybe you want to raise goats, but you don't really have any experience. You know, talk, talk to people who raise goats. Um, you know, watch videos, re read books about it. Uh, you know, learn that stuff because you don't want to get yourself in a situation where, you know, you're, you just bought 10 goats and, and they start having labor and, you know, you don't know what to do, you know. You, you really need to study, you know, you read, you know, try to read a little bit every day on, you know, a subject that's related to what your farm's going to do, okay. Um, number five, do not plan or try to be profitable right away, okay, because if you're, if that's your focus on the farm, number one, you're, you're probably doing it for the wrong reason, and secondly, it's not going to end well for you, okay, because it takes time to build the rapport with the customers and companies and stuff like that, so if you're trying to make a business out of your farm, do not try to be profitable. Um, you know, it's okay to try to, you know, sell some stuff and that's fine and keep money coming in, but don't expect a profit right off because that's going to come later. It's not going to come that first year, maybe not the first, the second year. Um, you know, by three years in, you should start, you know, having a little extra and it might not be much, but it, it's a start and it's, uh, you know, this, it, it takes a while to really build finances, um, consistently so don't think that you're gonna plant a garden and be able to sell it all because you're not um, you know the profit will come but focus on your infrastructure first maybe you need fencing maybe you need you know a small greenhouse um, you know a barn shelters stuff like that that's what you need to focus on that's what you need to be rolling your money over into is the infrastructure of your farm or your homestead you know, maybe you need a root cellar put in. Uh, maybe you just need to spend the money on canning jars or, or, and stuff like that. Keep rolling it over. Keep putting it back into the business. Do not plan on getting a profit. Um, number six, uh, start small. Don't jump right in. Okay, don't go buy five pigs and ten goats and forty chickens and... Just start small. Get what you can handle. Okay? This is, is, farming is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You're not trying to get to the end fast. You're, you're going for the long haul. So you're going to start off small. You get what you need. Get what you can handle. You know, maybe you can't handle a 200 foot garden. Maybe you only have the time during the week to deal with a 50 foot garden. Okay, start with a 50 foot. You know, start with six chickens. Work, build your flock up as time goes on. Start with a couple goats, start with your, or a couple cows, a couple pigs. Don't overdo it. Plant what you can handle. Plant what you have time for. Get the animals that you have time for. Okay? It's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, number seven, do not be afraid to ask for help. Being able to do stuff on your farm by yourself is fine. If you can, you know, DIY your way along that's great and, and really you should I mean you're gonna save profits by not paying somebody else to do it but if you don't know how to do something don't be afraid to ask you know or do the, do that research find out how to do it because making a mistake could cost you more money down the road and that's not what you want to do uh, maybe it makes more sense to hire somebody you know maybe you need something dug out with an excavator to put in a root cellar or maybe you want to put in a pond you know the, those are probably some things where maybe you'd want to rent hire somebody out to come in with an excavator spend an hour dig a giant hole um you know you don't want to be doing that by sh with shovels but don't be afraid to ask because most people will be more than willing to help um give you ideas or, or anything like that so and that's you know a strong part of what farming is is it's it's all community uh number eight don't get in over your head 
Okay, get what you you can handle. And I talked a little about this before. Same thing, you know, with don't incur debt and don't get those animals. Um, you know, you can't handle. Don't overdo your garden. Don't overdo a giant greenhouse. Get what you can handle, and then slowly build. Uh, number nine, you need to prioritize your needs. You need to, if you're going to get animals, then they need shelter, they need pasture, they need fencing. Um, you know, those, those, prioritize those. If you're going to have a garden, then you know you need enrich enriching soil. Enrich soil, maybe that's your priority. You need to get some animals on there um, and help to help enrich that soil. Maybe you need to get that soil sent out and see what you need if you're going to have a have a garden. See what minerals and vitamins that that soil doesn't have. So you need just really prioritize what you need versus what you want. Because like I said earlier, you know, I would love a giant hoop house, but I don't need a giant hoop house. Uh, I'll be fine with a, you know, 10 by 20 greenhouse for now. And then, you know, down the road, you know, if things go the way we hope, then we'll get a giant hoop house. But I don't need it. So I'm not going to go get one. I'm going to get what I need to get things going and then build from there. Okay. And the last one, and this is going to tie into the first tip is get back into basics when you're burned out and those days will come you'll get tired you, you're doing the same thing every day you know you're weeding your garden you're picking your vegetables you're feeding in the morning you're feeding at night you're lugging water you know you're doing all that every day and then you know those days come where you just you're tired and you still have to do it and that's when you go back to that first tip and you ask yourself why and, and what that joy is and you go back to the basics and you go back and you do the things you love maybe you love you know weeding weeding out the garden maybe that's your piece you know go do that you know get out of the daily grind of running your farm for a couple hours and go do the thing that brought you joy maybe it's just watching the goats jump around maybe it's watching the chickens peck and explore you know it it can be very simple but it can bring you happiness and that's what you got to remember that this isn't just a job or you know no something you have to do every day i mean you do because it's you know a farm and you have responsibilities but it doesn't have to feel like it's a job it can feel like it's a good life and, and that's really what it's about so thank you guys for watching uh hope this has been helpful hope you guys can get some stuff out of this um I would really appreciate it if you give us a subscribe uh, down below or right here on the screen at the end. And uh, again, thank you so much for watching. So have a good day. Talk soon.